I'm Pietro De Placido. I'm a breast medical oncologist and a research fellow at Dana Farber Cancer Institute. Hi, I'm Dionisia Quiroga. I am a breast medical oncologist and researcher at the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center. Across triple negative breast cancer, we see the uh, ADC is generating a lot of new promising data. How do you see them coming into the first line therapy? And how do you think they'll fit into the overall treatment algorithm? Yeah, so I, I do think with triple negative breast cancer specifically, sasituzumab govotecan so far is kind of what's leading the data right now. We have good uh, data that shows that plus pembrolizumab and pdl one positive disease shows improved outcomes over our more standard of care chemotherapies plus pembrolizumab. We also see that the, the safety profile is pretty much the same. There's, of course, unique side effects with every drug. So, you know, in discussing with patients kind of the pros and the cons, we, of course, have to factor in growth factor, the amount of times that patients have to come in for treatments, these types of things. But I think there's very compelling data there. So I routinely use that as, as an option for my folks. I think another really interesting piece that we're going to get more data on is what to do with our folks who are PDL1 negative. And there are ongoing trials that are looking at sasituzumab plus govotecan in that population as well. If we have approval of those drugs or we seek good data from that, that would really be our first opportunity to use immunotherapy in that PDL1 negative space in the metastatic setting. So that I think is very exciting. We also know some of the Tropion uh, data trials are coming down the line as well. So there is data in the first line setting for datapotomab, Durextecan plus Dervalimab. That is out of the phase two begonia trial that has many arms, and that was one of the arms that showed the clinical benefit. But we still have to wait for some phase three trial data to come out to see if that will be a good uh, first line option as well. And so this leads to my second question, actually, because when it comes to having like multiple ADCs available at the same time, I would like to know, how would you prioritize them like one over another? And also, can you give some advice about how to sequence them in a correct way, like in the optimal way, maybe for the patients? Yes. And I think at tonight's event, this was discussed as well by Dr. Tarantino, that this is a, this is a topic you could probably dedicate a whole talk to. It's something that we both have a growing amount of data for, but it's still a big question mark, right? And so I think at the end of the day, the first question should be, patient preference and and what the patient wants to do, you know, of course, with, with the information we have. So discussing common side effects, frequency of administration. I do find for a lot of um, my HER2 low patients, for example, especially the hormone receptor positive folks, in HER2 gives us an option where folks only need to come in once a week and, you know, perhaps have a lower rate of alopecia or some of these other side effects that they may see more frequently with trope-directed ADCs. Um, I also think, you know, consideration of what the disease burden looks like in HER2 or um, trastuzumab can, it has a little bit more CNS data. We still have CNS data with, I should say, the other two ADCs, pr probably even more than some of our other standard chemos. But when we're considering those factors, that might drive me to choose one of these agents earlier. In terms of sequencing, I find that's very difficult because especially with triple negative breast cancer, it's been brought up multiple times that there are many patients who never get to their second line of treatment, right? And of those that get to a second line of treatment, there are also some that fall off between that. They are, they are not well enough or can't get their third line. So, you know, uh, which are we using kind of quote unquote the big guns first versus maybe using a sandwich method where we're doing a chemotherapy between an antibody drug conjugate. So I have, I've personally done both. Um, but I do think, I, I do agree with the panelists tonight that there is probably for most folks some utility to put sandwiching a chemotherapy between each of the ADCs, um, especially if we're thinking about um, the data that's come out that has shown that almost around the board, no matter what ADC you're sequencing in which way, the second ADC you introduce tends to be less effective for a shorter period of time. I think there is also some space for some biomarker studies, maybe this would help us like personalize better the treatment or 
probably give better outcomes with some of those words. Absolutely. And triple the right English. Oh, yes. Triple negative is so heterogeneous that I think that you're absolutely right. Biomarkers are really going to be the future of how we, we know how to treat this disease. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.